Don't wrestle with a 100-pound boxer while you're wearing fake nails. Hey, Summer Hens, welcome back. And if this is your first time here, welcome. I am Naomi. This is Summer Hen Beauty, where we talk all things beauty for people who are not spring chickens anymore, but they still want to look gorgeous. Today is the kind of first day of the month. It's not really the first day of the month, but I did my best. And on the kind of first day of the month, we talk about what I learned about beauty this month. If you want to see month ones, it's up there or there. And it's what I learned last month. Spoiler, it's about standing up for yourself. But if you want to hear the whole story of how we got to that lesson, make sure to watch the video. This month, I learned two things. You get a bonus tip this month. The first lesson I learned is fairly quick to explain and fairly self-explanatory. Don't wrestle with a 100-pound boxer while you're wearing fake nails. Uh, I had some really nice fake nails. They were really nice. And um, then I wrestled with Simba, and um, they're not here anymore. So we'll leave the intervening period to your imagination, and we will simply say that if you, for example, are wearing fake nails and you have a 100-pound boxer around, maybe have someone else wrestle with him. That's advice number one. Number two. Let me tell you some things that have happened. You may remember in my Desert Island Beauty video, one of the products that I mentioned was Stila, Stila, Stula, I never know how to say the names, 10 in 1 Beauty Balm, okay? It is one of my absolute go-to products for if I'm in a rush and I need to not look like I just woke up or just woke up in the back of a pickup truck, uh, that is perfect. It does all these things. It's illuminating. Somehow the color works on my skin, which shocks me. It's moisturizing. It has all these kind of things. Anyway, I reached for it because I'd been putting on too many big, heavy products lately. And I thought, maybe I'm starting to break out a little bit. I should try something a little lighter. So I reached for that and I tried to shoot a video and I tried to shoot a video and I tried to shoot a video and they just didn't work. And I realized the problem was it's just not giving enough coverage it's not giving enough there there to do anything in particular, like particularly well. So even though it's got 10 of these things that it does and it does them okay, it doesn't do any one of them. And in particular, the thing you'd most want out of a BB cream, it doesn't do it that well. Okay. So flash forward. So I'm going through and I'm doing a bad bin video. It's coming tomorrow. Um, and I ran across this baby right here. This is, I never know how to say this. I never know how to say any of them. I don't even know why I try. Ole Henriksen, Ole Henriksen, I'm not sure. Um, or maybe it's some kind of cool, like, ethnic pronunciation. Anyway, this is Banana Bright Eye Cream. And I bought it because I will buy anything with banana in the name. I won't lie. That was my rationale. But upon buying it, I looked it up online and I saw, and I think it, they said it was a three-in-one as well. They said that it was a moisturizer, some kind of a firmer, and like an illuminator and or primer, which is kind of four things. Um, and so basically you use it as your morning eye cream and it does all the things and it stops you from having to get an illuminator, an under eye primer, anything like that, a firming treatment. I tried this a bunch of times. Well, first of all, I could never totally forgive it for not smelling like bananas, but that's on me. Um, and it never did any of them particularly well. It just didn't really do much. It wasn't that great as moisturizers go. It wasn't that great as illuminators go. It didn't prime particularly well. My concealer sort of got fairly liquidy around it. Um, and it just didn't really do what I was looking for it to do. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't particularly good at anything. Moving on to our next example, because God gives you lessons till you learn them. Smashbox, photo finish, so chill, coconut, three in one primer water. You can see it's kind of wet because I keep it in my fridge because they said to because it would be cooling. And my God, it's been hot lately. Um, so this is apparently a primer water. You can use it to prime your skin before makeup. You can use it to set your makeup as a setting spray. And you can use it as a refresh. I will quote the brand when I say vacay vibes in a bottle. This hydrating 3-in-1 face primer preps sets and refreshes both your makeup and your mood with relaxing coconut, silicone, alcohol, and oil free. All skin types for you to use. Mist on as a primer, use as a setting spray, or to refresh your makeup slash mood. Okay. First of all, I did not find much, um, in the way of priming ability. Maybe I look for a lot in a primer, but this didn't really prime that well. I guess it was better than putting your makeup on nothing, but it didn't do much priming. When I used it as a setting spray, I found that it got my mascara fairly wet, um, which on a level is my fault for not having waited long enough, but it just didn't particularly set that well. I have some better setters than this. 
And as it applied to refreshing, I don't really know what refresh your makeup is supposed to mean. I will say it refreshed my mood. It's cold and it smells like coconuts. Yeah, that'll make your day better. It really will. I use this a lot of times. This was pretty full and I've only had it for a little while. But no, I've used it a fair bit. I spray it on my face when I'm hot. It's nice. So effectively what this really is is face perfume. <laughs> like the three-in-one things that it said it would do, it didn't really do any of them. Now, exception might be here if you've got really oily skin and you can't handle a primer primer, a capital P primer, you might like this, okay? If you can't wear the primers, you might like this one. Last, you might have seen him around these parts, Noah, our favorite rooster, sent me a DM and said his friend told him to buy this product. It was Essence's Brow and Lash Gel Mascara. And he tried it and he wasn't sure if he was using it right, whatever. And he said, but what is it? And I was like, you know, Noah, that's an excellent question. So I looked it up and I was reading about it and whatever. I was looking up some reviews and things. And it seems to be that that rule is applying for that as well. Is it a brow gel? Is it a brow mascara? Is it an eyelash mascara? What is it? And does it do any of them well? And it seems like the internet says no, it really doesn't. Again, in a pinch, would it do better than nothing at all? Almost definitely. But it loses that sense of focus and purpose that makes a dedicated product do its job well. And so the R&D, research and development, is going to go into making sure it does two things, and it's just not going to really have that much punch behind either one of them. So that's, I think, what I've learned this month. Maybe it's time for me to abandon my fantasy of ultra-efficiency so that things, basically I can use them as an excuse to buy things. Look, it does two things. It does three things. It does ten things. And thinking that, look, see, I should get it. I'm wondering if it's really just a marketing ploy at this point. Now, I'm all for marketing ploys. I love buying makeup. But I do think that quality is starting to suffer. And again, if I'm going to get on a plane and I want the entire like three days worth of makeup that I'm going to wear to fit in like my jean pocket, you best believe some of these multis are going to get involved. Absolutely. They're not bad. But I think when we're trying to play a bigger game and kind of go up to a higher level, we have to maybe stop looking at that efficiency and that economy and maybe start looking at quality by itself. So that's what I think I've learned about makeup this month. Having said all of that, we're going to look later in the week and should I buy it because there's a two-in-one from Chanel. Like an actual two-in-one, not cheating and using your lipstick as an eyeshadow, okay? Like an actual two-in-one, it says it on the box. And we're going to see if that is an exception to this rule because Chanel is the exception to many rules, okay? So that's what I've got coming up for you. If you have not yet subscribed... Summer Hens, join us. We are a growing coop. We would love to have you. We are all getting our grooves back together. Click subscribe. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you for spending time with me today. I'll see you tomorrow.